Miguel Adorati back here on the MMA Museum. This is our now relatively new segment called uh, Classic Fights. I'm joined by a new guest, Monty Cox. This is uh, Monty's been on the podcast a ton, but this is his first Classic Fight, and uh, we're gonna go back and watch uh, Rings Fight from the year 2001, and uh, it's one of Monty's fighters, Meet Truck Shaw, taking on the great. Fedor Emelianenko. Monty, a lot of baggage around this fight. Talk to us. Well, this was kind of interesting. I, I, had, I had developed a relationship with Rings and uh, with Modico and, and such. And so she started bringing guys over. And I was bringing over, um, you know, Bobby Hoffman, Jeremy Horn, you know, Militich went over, you know, Dave Manet. And, and, uh, out, kind of out of nowhere, they they were looking for a heavyweight, but they didn't at the time didn't want Hoffman, and so I had a guy named Kerry Shaw, the nickname the Meat Truck, uh, from Cincinnati that I had just signed uh, along with Rich Franklin. They were training partners, and and I signed them both, and uh, I offered the fight uh, to Kerry. I mean, Kerry was a big six foot five. 300 pound monster and uh, had really good jujitsu ju for a big guy. Um, not the greatest striker, but, but uh, it was just a big, tough dude. You don't want to be hit by carry anyway. <laughs> no, I mean, nobody that size. Right. Right. And, so they and, said, and, and just, just to be clear too, he wasn't uh 300 pounds, you know, the way uh cabbage was or anything like that. He was put no. together. Yeah, he's 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 a you know good weightlifter and trained hard and yeah he was he was in in great shape and he had endurance there was a lot of good things he's had wrestling background and um, he uh, the the opponent I was offered was a Russian guy that they said was six foot tall and about two thirty but not ripped up or anything and it was you know Fedor Emelianenko and and. At that time, that that name meant nothing. Sure. Let uh, me now. Now, if you look at Fedor's record now on the Sure Dogs and the Tap Outs and the, these sites, they've dug up a whole bunch of experience that Fedor had in rings, in fights in Russia and Bulgaria, but they didn't tell Monty anything about those at the time. No, no I was told he was one and zero, oh and and his size and my experience in rings was. Uh, Guys named guys like uh, Andre Kapalov and and uh, and Volkan, who are more actors, uh, you know, uh, 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 pro wrestler types than actual fighters. And so when they had they had a new guy with only one fight, um, Kerry, I think at the time was five and two, and uh, had been fighting good people. And I thought, wow, what a what a great matchup for us! And you know, I got him a whole twenty five hundred dollars. Uh, uh, for that fight, which actually at the time you weren't, you couldn't get that in any of the you know local shows. For sure, and we yeah. got to go to Japan. And uh, yeah, so Meat Truck ate the long end of a young Fedor coming up, and uh, we're going to take a look at this right now. I'm going to go three, two, one, Monty here in a minute. We'll both hit play, and we'll check this out along with the fans here. Sounds good. Three, two, one. And uh, you can see the video's got the uh, Japanese writing there, and Me Truck is in yep. the green uh, in the corner. You can see um, that's Me Truck. And like I said, he's not uh, <laughs> a chubby guy. He's a put together yeah. a big man. He's got, is that Hughes in his corner? Yeah, he's got, he's got that wimp Matt Hughes in the corner. Yeah. So UFC champion there, and uh, Fedor. We're going to get a close up here of Fedor in a minute, I hope. Uh, and there it is. That's a young Fedor. Yeah, he's actually in better shape then than he was later. <laughs> yeah, he, he but he looks pretty much the same. He, look, he obviously looks a little younger, maybe face a little less worn. But, yeah, I, I think if you were a betting man just on view here. You, you, now, Meat Truck's got an interesting story from the weigh-ins, right? The first, what, what did Meat Truck's reaction was uh, the first time he laid eyes on Fedor at the weigh-ins? Well, we, we kind of disagree on that. I, I And, and I'm never, I never know if... Uh, uh, if I'm if I'm wrong, but he, as I remembered it, when Fader weighed in and stuff, I thought, and I've told this story, that that uh, the carry said, you know, I'm they're going to arrest me for murder, and uh, uh, he says he never said that, and maybe he didn't. I don't know. I mean, you know, but over over the years and stuff, but 
but we definitely were pretty confident um, when we saw him at the weigh-ins and, and such. They exchanged, and me, me truck got the worst of the exchange, but he didn't get knocked out right away. Um, no, you did a you nice said, job there of rolling through the arm bar. And, yeah, that for sure. And, and you said he had good jiu-jitsu. I, I think right here he's still kind of recovering from the punch he took. You can see him kind of dazed, like, yeah, you know, trying to get his faculties back. And before he really has much of a chance to do anything, they they think they stand him up. Yeah. yeah that, that's classic Fedor at the opening of the fight where he came out swinging. You know, he, he, would, oh, yeah. he would throw big, strong, hard punches from the very beginning. And at this point, me truck with the stand up probably realizes this isn't going to be quite as easy as I thought. He throws the big kick and Fedor again, good judo Fedor on top again. And he goes for a foot lock. We got me truck. Me truck defends out. pretty well. I mean, he, he went for goes for his own heel hook there. He's, I mean, like I said, for a heavyweight back in yeah. that, he he knew his jets. Yeah, no, for sure. He's already looked pretty good uh, on the ground and, and uh, with getting out of the arm bar and knew what he was doing there. Um, trying to stay safe in the footlock here. He is not tapped out. The ref wanted him to, but I think. Uh, yeah. Me no, he, he uh, pain was not a thing for him. He could take a lot of pain. So he, he uh, you know, up there. Yeah, he's, you know, Fedor is pretty good. Yeah, that's the thing is that's the thing that you you see here early with this guy is relentless, huh? You know, yeah. Meat Truck Meat Truck also was throwing some punches. You know, like you said, tried the submission. There was no way to slow Fedor down, and he he just yeah went from you know foot locks, arm lock failed, foot locks and leg locks, and then finally secured the arm lock. Didn't yeah. give Meat Truck really a a, a chance. Uh, you know, and you know you know Kerry's Kerry's pretty quick for a guy his size. But the, the the extra seventy pounds certainly didn't help him once Fader got on top. I mean, he's, he 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 maneuvered around him pretty good. Yeah, There's I always I always said about Fedor, Fedor was stronger than anybody smaller than him and faster than anyone bigger than him. You know, he was <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah. perfect that way. You know, and exactly. um, uh, I think we saw here an early glimpse. This is early Fedor. A lot of people haven't seen this fight when you know they they got into his pride days and things like that. And, uh, you know, I think with Meat Truck that he did have an opponent that was credible and it's not like they were bringing him along with, uh, you know, just uh, your average guys or anything like that. This was a fight. And, and I think it shows because it's not like Fedor didn't take fight seriously, but I think that he was serious as a heart attack in this fight. He was not it, there to play. Yeah, well, it's it's, it's hard. It's hard to look at Kerry and uh, and not take him seriously. You know, I mean, he's pretty scary dude yeah so. now let me ask you though in rings there was you know and they they were throwing fists there you know so this was a no holds barred match but um in rings they also did you know some different rules and things and they liked that competition you know get the submission do use rope escapes and yeah. things like that um what were the rules for this thing and and, and what how was it presented What's funny, once I started going over there, um, I, I got to know Modico really well, and she became my partner for like 20 years. She's recently recently passed away. Oh, um, God, I didn't know that. Uh, uh, yeah, no one's no one's talked about it or anything. I had a heck of a time confirming it. But, yeah, she the, the, oh, the Kotani brothers that I managed okay. that she sent over, they confirmed that she did pass away of a heart attack. That's um, a shame. And, and so, yeah, she was super good. But uh, anyway, the, as we started going over there, that was right when they were converting from pro wrestling, rope escapes, all that kind of stuff, and trying to get real, you know, real stuff. That's where the King of Kings and those things started, the giant tournament with all those names, those great names in it. And uh, they, uh, uh, they, they actually used me for a lot of coming up with the rules and things like that. I, I I've said this before. I I cost uh, I cost Jeremy Horn a win over Randy Couture because <laughs> I told them that you know before they would if three judges voted and two had even and one had a fighter they gave the win to the fighter and I said no no that's a that's a majority draw and you have to go overtime so uh, you know Horn went over there and fought Couture and he got the win but only one out of the three 
they go to overtime and he lost. So I cost him a win over Randy. Sure. Yeah. It's funny. And you did work with, you know, the rings USA was Monty working with them on a series in the United States. It didn't catch on the way you kind of hope, but you know, Monty put uh, some legs into that. And in this particular case, um, you mentioned the King of Kings tournament, which at the time was full of great names. You know, you had oh. Henzo Gracie, Maurice Smith, Randy Couture, Jeremy Horn, just and to name a few, Ricardo uh, Arona. Arona. Um, and uh, Fedor took a loss there on a cut to Teoshoki Kosaka. And uh, so he was presented to you as, you know, 1-0, and 1-1, oh, one one, the cut 17 seconds into the fight. So um, yeah. nobody knew what we were getting with Fedor. He didn't win the King of Kings, so he right. didn't start at the very top. He probably could have won it if he had not gotten cut and yeah. gotten well, out. I, think, I definitely think so. And and I was actually there because I had I had guys in every phase of that tournament. And he didn't and, stick out, huh? They also had Dave Manet and guys like that that were all in it. Um, so I was there and saw it, but it didn't mean anything. You know, it's just, oh, TK got a got an easy win. And, and so when they brought uh, Fader up to me later, honestly, I didn't remember that that's the guy I saw get a quick loss. They just said, you know, he's got a, he's got a fight or two, and, and uh, that was it. So we're like, yeah, I'll take that fight. Now, you, uh, you got to work with Vadim uh, many years later on the MFC show, Vadim being uh, Fedor's eventual manager. And you were around Fedor, you know, many, many years later. Did he remember this? Did he remember this fight? Did you ever have a chance to talk to him about it? Well, the funny thing, Rich Franklin and I always always kind of tease Kerry. You know, we're, 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 we, no one's safe around all of us. We tease this <laughs> other, you know. Well, we saw him in Korea, and we got – we I made up a sign that said, I beat the meat truck. And then we ha- had him hold it, and Rich and I on each side took the picture – and we put it in a frame and gave it to him for Christmas. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. That's outstanding. That's outstanding. But, and a uh, yeah, little play on I words was, there. <laughs> yeah, remember, I was CEO of M1 yeah. Global. So right. I had Fedor for nine months and and did a lot of press conferences and stuff like that. I, I actually got a chance to face off with him when uh, when Jeff Munson was was fighting him and skip the – skip the, uh, uh, the the uh, the way in in the interview the, the press conference he j- he skipped it to go do something else typical Munson and uh, so there was no one else so I I stood up and I I spoke what Munson would have said and you know I hate America and all that stuff and 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 and, uh, and then Fader and I faced off and I gotta say there's a moment there where I saw a little fear in his eye just uh- a little bit and I said don't worry it's just gonna be Munson. See, I, I, I've got a, an opposite story with Fedor. He was down in Costa Rica with Vadim and Vlad. We were doing the Bodog shows. And uh, the bar at the uh, uh, hotel, which we had shut down the hotel and we had every room in it. Uh, the bar at the hotel was closed. It was early in the morning and Vlad and Vadim and Fedor were sitting, um, you know, with their backs to me. As I walked in, I'd been looking for him. And I walk in and I, I call for Vlad. And Vlad and Vadim kind of keep talking and they ignore me for a little bit. And but Fedor looked back at me and I could see him look me from toe to head to toe, like, you know, up and down. Yeah. And, you know, I, I sincerely think that like, like the Terminator, he, 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 he got a readout. No, no danger. <laughs> no, <laughs> weak, weak. <laughs> yeah, no danger at all. But I, I had that feeling of him looking at me and giving me that once over. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and by, by then he was Fedor, though. He was the last emperor yeah. at that point. So, yeah, you had to be worried. So, Monty, I want to thank you. Uh, a classic fight. We were trying to get Meat Truck on there. But uh, Meat Truck is, uh, you know, kind of a family man now and a little bit elusive. Uh, we're going to try to keep getting him on because I think uh, you know, his stories are worth telling in terms of uh, he put a lot of mileage in in the early days of the fight game. And um, if he doesn't, at least we got to watch this fight with respect because he got a taste of the last emperor. To me, the number one pound for pound guy of all time. And, uh, you know, it'd be interesting uh, to go further. But a lot of insight and a lot of good stuff from Monty. Thank you so much, man. All right. Hey, thanks for having me.